Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with a 1962 Lincoln Continental. Now, let's remember, of course, 1961 was the first year for the Continental, styled by Elwood Engel, who really turned Lincoln styling around from space age zombie robot creature from the Black Lagoon, asymmetrical angular styling of 1960 to something far more tasteful and I dare say it austere. Less was definitely more. Very plain smooth slab side styling, blade like uh, projections along the tops, sharp creases, a very tasteful Thunderbird-esque A-pillar, nice tasteful chrome around the windows but nothing down the side, no zigzags, no stripes, no fender flares, nothing and a beautiful Thunderbird inspired C pillar or B pillar in this case here. Now we got to remember of course that these were four doors only until 1968 I think but four door hardtop or convertible. Now here's the thing the convertible is available from 1961 through 1968 and in 1962 the convertible cost $664 more than the hardtop. In other words this thing would have been $6,074 out the door in 1962 but the convertible would have been $664 more. Production on these things in 62 was 27,849 hardtops and a mere 3,212 convertibles. In fact, here is that convertible right here. This is an AMT model kit, 1965, but we can see the four doors totally open top. And again, the beauty of these things is the fact that these are unit construction. If you look under this AMT model, you won't see a frame. There's no perimeter frame. There's nothing, no X. These are strictly unit construction vehicles. And it was brave for Ford to do an open top vehicle without a frame, which is to say that twisting could have been a real big problem, but they have hidden girders and bridge work, if you will, inside. So they're pretty rigid structure vehicles. And we can see on this one, they all had dual exhaust. And of course, by 61 too, Cadillac was strictly single exhaust. Of course, Cadillac being Lincoln's uh, primary enemy, but Lincoln always dual exhaust, even when there was a two barrel under the hood. More on that in a second. But as we look at this one, this one is, again, first generation, 61 through 63, on a 123-inch wheelbase. For 64, it increased 3 inches to 126 inches. As a result, the back door became a little bit longer in 64 up. But with that said, there's still tons of room. But here is the Continental's party trick right here, suicide doors. Check this out. We do that, and we do that. And you get full access inside the car. Now, the only downside potentially is if you're in Manhattan and you're getting out for the gala at the opera and a cab goes, wow, boom, it slams that door right on you when you're halfway in, halfway out. Well, that's what I call it a suicide door. But as long as you're watching what you're doing, it's kind of cool. Now, keep in mind, this is a fixed B pillar right here. And it's a rigid piece. It is structural for sure. So again, this is not a hard top. It's just an end. So when the doors are closed, this structure right here is kind of invisible, but this absolutely adds a lot of rigidity. But again, on the convertibles, you know, there's no B pillar, there's no nothing. And there's no frame under this. It's kind of interesting. So this one here, we see the leather interior, and this is a 1962 Lincoln Continental sales brochure right here. The new Lincoln Continental second year in right here. And here it is. Its hallmark is surpassing good taste. The classic beauty, which is Lincoln Continental's exclusive, exclusively, does not depend on ostentation. A total 180 from 1960. Uh, its timeless styling reflects a unique and striking dignity. And here we have here this lady with her mink stole getting in. Entering the rear seat compartment of Lincoln Continental for 62 is as easy as entering the front thanks to wide opening doors hinged to the body instead of the center pillar. Down here, you'll have to look closely to tell the difference between the new Lincoln Continental and its predecessor. The changes are really refinements with a purpose. A keen eye will discover the chaste new look of the grille. You may also see that the headlights are a one inch higher for better view on the road at night. Inside the steering wheel is three quarters of an inch higher. So little changes were done. Again, here is the uh, the sedan and beautiful uh, luxury tail to your good taste. No more ostentation, no more of that 1950s stuff and form beautifully follows function. Again, Elwood Engel was at command at uh, Ford Styling, Lincoln Styling. He would go to Chrysler, of course, and make his mark there. But here's that classic convertible right there in baby blue. 
And uh, just a beautiful looking car with the top up. It's equally dignified, if you will. But again, no B pillar on this one. Again, it's a soft top. Now this brochure is kind of interesting. This is actually from 1962. And this is, this is something that was sent out to Lincoln buyers. Lincoln Continental Division, it's a questionnaire. The accompanying brochure can only acquaint you with the highlights of Lincoln. In other words, come on in. I'd like to have a demonstration. Send your name and number. And this is kind of cool, these bits of paperwork that sometimes are found in brochures. This is from uh, Ben D. Mills, head of Lincoln, right here. And again, it was from Dearborn, Michigan. And dear fine car owner, in other words, they'd send these to Cadillac and Imperial owners, and yes, Lincoln owners, to tempt them away to try out a Lincoln and maybe buy it. And again, it, it worked. Let's keep in mind that in 1962, uh, 27,849 of these were sold, so people seem to like them. Let's play a little game called What's in the Ashtray? Now, of course, we can see here the actual uh, wood veneer inside with the, the, you can see the lacquers peeling off after time. Here's the power window switch, but here's the ashtray. This has probably not been open in a long time. Drum roll, please. Okay, all right. Well, nothing here. Nobody smoked today, but look at this. Look at the lighter. The lighter inside of that. How cool is that? With the Lincoln sort of starburst pattern, the plastic lucite on the, or uh, some sort of plastic there, maybe Bakelite on the, uh, and it's sort of very hides in plain sight, very dignified. Up front, let's do the little uh, what's in the box trick. And uh, let's see, here is, look at, the, uh, look at the instrument panel on this thing. How cool is that, right? Like dual cowl sort of, cowl, or a column shifted automatic, and this would have had the link, the Merco Matic or the Lincoln uh, Cruiser Matic, I think it was, cast iron automatic. No C6 quite yet, but again, beautiful interior on this thing. All those little pods, the details, the die cast metal, and again, the wood veneer. Look at the Lincoln Continental logo on that glove compartment door, how it's basically uh, just really beautifully rendered right there. Almost looks like jewelry, but with that said, what's in the box? Okay, push the button. Okay, all right, let's look. Here's the light. A little surprised at the cardboard construction, but okay. Here is, okay, Perlux Covina, California. Maybe this is a California car, is it possible? Your guide to automotive insurance. Okay, Massachusetts, insurance papers. Uh, what do we have here? Yeah, registry of motor vehicles. Eh, eh, nothing too cool. What do we got here? Shell mileage record from uh, six of 27. 9,005 miles way back when. Kind of cool. Anyway, yeah, nothing too cool. No $100 bills. Midas. Okay, that's what we got here. Uh, somebody here in 1978, April 27th, 1978, Margaret Butinsky of uh, Gill, Massachusetts, got a Midas muffler repair. Here's her warranty stuff here. Pretty cool. Yeah, okay, what's in the box? Yeah, some cool stuff. Let's put it back in there and let it get found in another hundred years by another junkyard crawler. Oh, look at this though. The, the veneer is uh, peeling. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> okay, this is glued on some <laughs> and stuck it on. So there is the, the fake wood. Well, it is actually wood. Look at that. There's a veneer, very thin veneer. I guess that's wood. I don't know, but there it is. But so anyway, there's that. Let's keep hunting and looking. Close the doors. Ah, yes. And, okay, but one thing that's kind of cool about Continental was the Thunderbird-esque forward hinged hood. Check it out. Right like that. Let's prop this up. Yeah, okay. Now keep in mind, these are unit construction. That which looks like a frame right there, that's actually integrally welded to the floor. The inner fenders are structural. That's not a, a thin panel. That's actually part of the uh, the framework of the car. And it says here, 2Y, uh, 6-2-H, I believe. 1962 is the model year. Uh, H, I believe, means the three, or the 430 engine, which in 1961 and two had a two-barrel carburetor. Yeah, a two-barrel on top of the 430. 1963, it got a Carter AFB four-barrel. Went from 300 to 320 horsepower. But again, the 432 barrel had dual exhaust on these things. The motor's gone now, but again, here's Motor Trend, July 61, and uh, we know the drill. What's that sound? Cancelled? What do you mean we're cancelled? Anyway, inside this we have a little write-up 
on what's new for Continental, and it says, the biggest difference in the Lincoln Continental is easy to see, but other, more subtle engineering changes have greatly altered the way it performs and handles. In the long run, these developments may be more significant than the new styling. With the largest displacement engine of any domestic car, performance is somewhat limited by a two-barrel carburetor, as they mention here. And we can see the Lincoln Continental versus Cadillac Imperial and Thunderbird. Uh, it went zero to 60 in 12.9 seconds, but got 10 to 14 miles per gallon, which is better than the Cadillac, the Imperial, or the Thunderbird, thanks to its two-barrel carburetor. Kind of cool. So anyway, the Thunderbird and the Lincoln. Now, the one thing about these, these have a 14-inch wheel from the factory, and behind this, up front, there's an aluminum, aluminum brake drum. It's actually an 11-inch by 3 aluminum drum, and I'll have to insert a picture. I didn't bring a floor jack or a wrench, but there's aluminum drums on the front of these big Lincolns right here, which is to say that it wasn't just the Buick aluminum drum uh, that was available in Detroit, and also, of course, uh, certain GTOs and other uh, GM midsize cars could have aluminum drums, but full-size Lincolns like this had aluminum front drums. Now, let's open the trunk and see what we can find here. And before I do that, look at the, boy, this is well-preserved. The back of this is in really nice condition. Here's the little fuel filler. Nah, it doesn't want to, whatever that, oh, oh. <laughs> once again, we have a winner. Anyway, glued on. But anyway, this is pretty good. The bumper is in beautiful shape. Let's see what's inside of the trunk. Okay. <laughs> Factory lightweight, not just for Thunderbolts, folks. But this is kind of cool. Special Interest Autos, May, June, 76. Now, here's the thing. Special Interest Autos was a publication of Hemings Motor News. Of course, today, Hemings Classic Car. Same people, same company. And they were way ahead of the curve in 76, appreciating cars that were only 15 years old and good on them for it. With that said, here's their review of the Continental. Here's a 61 and a one-year Thunderbird-esque prowl. And we look inside, and here is their road test of the Continental by Michael Lamb, one of the great automotive journalists. And it says here, the 1961 Continental grew out of a Thunderbird design exercise, actually started life as a Thunderbird proposal in Elwood P. Engel's Stiletto Studio, down in the basement of Ford's design building. This was August of 58. So again, when cars make it to the showroom, they often have stories to tell. Speaking of which, look at the trips or the mistakes or the other errors along the way on the right-hand side. Side. Some of the styling proposals. Engels T-Bird proposal evolved into Lincoln at bottom at one point. We can see upstairs Bordenat, Eugene Bordenat, and the advanced Lincoln studio were working on evolutionary markups. And again, that ostentatious horror show that has uh, the weirdness happening. But by the bottom, Bordenat's upstairs studio saying expanded on Engels T-Bird to four doors. From this point on, changes were minor. Yeah, Special Interest Autos, one of my favorites. Again, way ahead of the curve with giving appreciation to Special Interest Autos way back when. And of course, Hemming's Classic Car to this very day continues that tradition. Subscribe if you can. Speaking of subscribing, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mags YouTube channel. Share this video. Give it a thumbs up, a like if you like it. And by all means, hit the bell, which means it will be alerted when the next video happens, which is tomorrow morning.